All right, to construct an embankment, which is just a big old mound of soil, I think roadway embankment, where you're gonna build a highway on top of it, for example, require 350,000 cubic yards of borrow soil. Borrow soil is just soil that comes from another place, right? You're gonna dig it up, put it in a truck, dump it somewhere, and then compact it. Um, it's compacted to 95% relative compaction, according to the standard proctor density test on the borrow soil measured the following. So this is important to understand the, the sequencing here. So borrow soil density means you're measuring the density of the soil at some other place, right? So you're gonna dig that soil up from that place, haul it somewhere, and then recompact it to a different volume. So you actually measured a total unit weight, let's just say in the borrow pit, you sent the field technician over there. They ran a field density test and they got 114 pounds per cubic foot and 18% water content. But <clears throat> you need to compact that soil to 95% of the standard Proctor max dry density according to, let's say the construction specs for that project, which is a pretty typical value, 95%. So you have a standard proctor that gives you a maximum dry density of 114 PCF and an optimal moisture of 16%. Now, you're gonna compact that soil to 95% of 114 PCF. So that'll allow you to calculate the in-place compacted dry density of that soil. So you know what it is before you dig it up, all right? It's 114 PCF divided by one plus the water content, 18%. That's the dry density in place before you dig it up. And then you're com going to compact it to a larger density, um, which if you think about what that means, if you're going to compact it to a, a more dense configuration than it is when you dig it up, that means you need to dig up more than what you're actually going to place. So you're gonna, at the end of the day, your embankment's going to be composed of 350,000 cubic yards of soil. But in a denser configuration than what you're digging up. So the real question is how much borrow soil do you need to dig up and transport to your site to construct the embankment based on how much you're going to compact it? So there's a really complicated way to solve this problem using phase relationships, phase diagrams like we talked about before. And there's an easy way to solve it using the equation on page 3-19. So there's two useful equations here. These are both gold, even in practice. So make sure you flag these. I've, I've used this many times in my career as a practicing engineer, because this, this seems to flummox people that you need to dig up more soil than you actually have to place. And a lot of folks just, they use something called a shrinkage factor. Anybody that does a lot of NCDOT work will recognize there's actually a map of North Carolina that's pretty cool that NCDOT has published that shows shrinkage factors across the state. Um, you know, the premise behind that shrinkage factor is it's saying that, you know, perhaps in the, the coastal plain, soils are usually looser than they are in the Piedmont, right? Anybody familiar with that area? It's just, you know, looser coastal deposits versus things that have weathered from rock and turned into residual soils. So, you know, maybe the in-place unit weights <clears throat> are perhaps relatively low compared to, say, the maximum dry density if you're digging up soil in a loose condition. So you'd have a larger shrinkage factor if you're digging soil up out of a borrow pit that's really, really loose and you're going to compact it to a really dense state. So this is a way to talk about shrinkage factors for earthwork. But we're going to calculate the actual shrinkage factor based on the tests. So put this in perspective. To define these terms here, <clears throat> this shows that there's a ratio of dry densities. Both these are gamma D. Gamma D embankment is the dry density of the soil in the embankment after you've compacted it. Gamma D borrow is the dry density of the soil from the hole that you dug it up out of in the borrow pit. Right? So we measured both these. Well, we're, we calculated this value, but we measured this one, or at least we measured the total unit weight, the moisture content, we can calculate gamma D from those values. So again, V borrow, this is the volume of the soil you need to borrow to build the embankment. Volume embankment, this is the volume of the embankment once it's constructed. So this value was given, V borrow is really what we're trying to find, right? So let's just walk through this again. We'll write this equation out from page 3-19. So gamma D embankment, 
divided by gamma d bar o is equal to v bar o divided by v embankment. So <clears throat> 350,000 cubic yards, that is the volume of the embankment, right? That was given. Volume borrow, quantity of borrow soil required, that's what we're trying to figure out. That's some number larger than 350,000. So presumably, it probably will be. Um, gamma D embankment, again, this is the dry density in place in the embankment after we've compacted it. Gamma D borrow is a dry density in the borrow pit when we dig it up. So we did some density testing on the borrow soil in terms of total unit weight and water contents, what we measured. That means we need to calculate gamma D borrow from gamma T borrow and the water content borrow, if we want to be explicit there. So you have one plus the water content. That equation is given on page 3-18. So this is 114 PCF divided by one plus 0 0.18. Is 14 divided by 1.18, 96.6. Okay, so now we got this number, but what are we going to compact it to? Gamma D embankment. Remember, we're going to compact it to 95% of the standard Proctor maximum dry density. We ran a standard Proctor on that material, and it's 114 pounds per cubic foot. So 95% of that value is what we're going to be compacting it to, expressed in terms of dry density. So just say gamma D embankment is equal to 0 0.95 or 95 percent times uh, let's just say sorry times that's an M believe it or not you know what let's just rewrite this <laughs> gamma D embankment is equal to 0 0.95 times MDD, right? Maximum dry density. And it's 0.95 times 114 PCF. 108.3 PCF. So we're going to dig something up that's 96.6 PCF and we're going to compact it until it's 108.3 PCF. So the way to really think about that is like the ratio of those densities is equal to the ratio of the volumes. That's what this equation means, right? <clears throat> so now we've got, I'm going to write back over here, apologize, I'm running out of space again from writing too large. So gamma D embankment, we calculated as 108.3 PCF divided by gamma D borrow, 96.6 PCF which is equal to a borrow volume, which is what we're trying to figure out, how much do we need to build a 350,000 cubic yard embankment. So volume borrow, issue of the dry densities, 6.6, Hundred and eighty-eight cubic yards. Oops, that's not right. <laughs> I have something wrong with my calculator. I did divide, not times. That's three hundred ninety-two thousand. Sorry about that. Three hundred ninety-one cubic yards, which is about B, right? Anybody else get B for that? <clears throat> yep, I got that too. All right. Anybody have any questions about that one? Hmm. Let's say for extra credit, if you want to calculate the shrinkage factor for that problem, there's a lot of ways to talk about what that is. It depends on what you mean by shrinkage factor. That's also kind of a common confusion between, well, I'll say, geotechnical engineers and um, maybe civil site engineers or roadway engineers that are trying to do the earthwork calculations. You could say that in this configuration, you're going to have 89% of the original volume or a ratio of 0.8. So maybe you'd say your shrinkage factor is one minus that number. So it's about 9%.
So you're getting like 9% shrinkage by digging that soil up in its current state and then recompacting it to that level of density. So as you can see, a shrinkage factor is obviously dependent upon two things. One, what's the density of the soil in situ or in place? And two, what density are you gonna compact it to? So the premise that you can always just know what a shrinkage factor is by looking it up in a book doesn't really make sense. It's really either based on experience, and again, I'll use North Carolina DOT as an example. They've got lots of experience figuring out shrinkage factors because they've built a lot of highways around North Carolina, as, as all DOTs have. All right, so most DOTs probably have an idea about what the shrinkage factor is around the state because they're always using the same specification to compact the soil to. And you know, within a given geologic region of the state, you could probably come up with something like that. You know, if you're the soil, the best thing you can do is just guess at the shrinkage factor, unless you do some testing like this. 